Let us insect bomb on uh, animals. Yeah, you will, uh, when we discuss about the details, you know, then you will be able to see that. Whether it will fall in this category or this category. Whether it fall in animal order or pranic order. So, if you look at the nature, <coughs> what you see is that there are four orders in nature. This these units can be divided, you know, in four orders. On the basis of their <coughs> characteristics, on the basis of their activity. So that is one thing. The second thing is that if you look at these four orders, the relationship between them. <coughs> relationship between them is that of mutual fulfillment. Which means they are related to each other. And they are mutually fulfilling. So they are related to each other in a mutually fulfilling <coughs> manner. That is what we were talking about you know, when we described this in connection with the production and work. That these three orders, you know, the soil, water, which is called physical order, <coughs> then animal, these plants and trees, which are called pranic order, animal and birds, which are called animal order, they are already, you know, in a relationship of mutual fulfillment among each other. Right. So, we took this example of the forest. So, if you look at the forest, right, all these are mutually fulfilling for, you know, each other and all themselves. <coughs> you don't have to do anything for them. They are mutually fulfilling for each other or you have to do something about it. <coughs> you don't have to do anything for them. Now when you place human being there, they are also mutually fulfilling for human being. And if you ask your natural acceptance, okay? Your natural acceptance is for being mutually fulfilling for each of them, right? And that is what we are not able to ensure. Or that is what we need to answer. So if only human being has the right understanding, okay, okay, they will be able to fulfill this relationship of mutual fulfillment. Right? Rest of them are anyway doing it. <coughs> so in that sense, there is a relationship of mutual fulfillment among these four orders. Okay? The first three orders are mutually fulfilling for each other. They are mutually fulfilling for human being also. Human also has a natural acceptance for this mutual fulfillment, for the rest three order. So this is one observation which is important. Now with this we can go into the details, some of the details about these four orders. And you can see how we have divided them into these four orders, the basis of it. <coughs> So, you can, number one, identify them on the basis of units. Then, you can identify them on the basis of their activity. You can also identify them on the basis of their characteristics. And 
ನಿಲ್ಲಿಸಿ ಫೈನಲಿ ಯು ಕೆನ್ ಐಡೆಂಟಿಫೈ ದೆಮ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಬೇಸಿಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದರ್ ಇನ್ಹೆರಿಟೆನ್ಸ್ If you look at this critical order, there are units like soil, water, metal, so all these units are there. If you look at their activity, there is an activity of composition and decomposition characteristic of it look at the physical order like soil water metal things like this there is an activity of composition and decomposition something is formed something is you know deformed in the process for example <coughs> if you have a piece of iron okay, and if it comes in contact with the you know, air and water humidity it gets rusted <coughs> so there is a rust in the air <coughs> you can see <coughs> so what is happening some composition is taking place of iron with oxygen okay. so you have ferric oxide and that's what the rust further the water is getting degenerated decomposed right so when water and this iron <coughs> comes in the contact then iron is composing a ferric oxide with oxygen the water is decomposing right, into hydrogen and oxygen so that is what is happening some composition some decomposition is taking place and this all is keeps happening right. so the activity that takes place in this physical order is that of composition and decomposition but if you look at the pranic order <coughs> that is things like plants and trees see this activity of composition and decomposition so this is there right composition and decomposition is taking place 
that is a plant is absorbing water, you know, soil, okay. They keep some energy, okay. And then some composition is taking place. That composition, decomposition takes place. But on top of this, this activity of respiration is also taking place. Can you see this? So all these plants and trees, right? They have this activity of respiration. But when it is physical order, it just has the activity of composition and decomposition. Now, when it comes to this characteristic, this physical order is characterized by its existence in a definite order. <coughs> so, for example, if you take a piece of iron, right, it will continue to be a piece of iron right, in a certain very definite order unless there is some composition, decomposition taking place. So, this existence is the basic characteristic of this physical order. But you can see that if you give one kg of, you know, piece of iron, okay, after one month, one year, it will remain one kg of iron. Okay. But if you take a plant, right, after one year, it will remain like a plant, so that existence is there, but then there is growth. So there is existence, plus there is growth. <coughs> what do you think? That plant will remain one kg of plant only? <laughs> It will grow, right? <coughs> it will become more than one kg. Or it will remain one kg. More than one kg. It's so simple, right? And the only way to keep it <coughs> at one kg is to convert it into physical order. Right? So you cut the tree, it becomes a wood, right? Now it is in physical order. Okay. Now it will not grow. But as long as it is in planning order, right? As long as it is like a plant, it will grow. Right? So can you see this difference? That the basic characteristic of the plant is not only to exist, right, in a definite order, but also to grow. Where is the piece of iron will continue to exist in a definite order. Right? No growth is taking place. <coughs> is that okay? <coughs> yeah. Now let's talk about this animal <coughs> order. <coughs> So we have animals and birds. <coughs> now, when you look at these animals and birds, you have to look at them at two levels. Right? At the level of body and at the level of self. <coughs> so at the level of body, <coughs> you will have composition, decomposition, plus you will have respiration. So at the level of body, it is, you know, working like the plant, you know, like the tree. <coughs> it has composition, decomposition, and it has respiration. 
at the level of cells, it has the activity of selecting and testing. So this, the lower activity of selecting and testing can be seen in the animal, right? But it largely does the selecting and testing okay, in accordance with the nurturing of the body. <coughs> right? So in accordance with nurturing of the body, it does the selecting and testing. In <coughs> if you look at human brain, Okay, let me put this. In terms of the characteristic, there is existence and growth in body. And there is a will to live in I. So there is a in, there is in I. As far as the body is concerned, it has the characteristic of existence plus growth. When it comes to human being, you can see this human order. So this human is. order has got only one types of in it. And that is human being. <laughs> <laughs> that is why every all human beings are same, right? Similar. <laughs> there are no different breeds, right? <laughs> In animals and birds, there are different breeds, right? So these human beings are there. If you look at this, at the level of body, it is the same. But at the level of self, you can see now these activities of imaging. Activity of analyzing. This activity of selecting and testing, right? In my so at the level of you know human being, all these activities have become you know prominent. This activity of imaging, activity of analyzing, you know, and then activity of selecting and testing. So these are the activities which are taking place in I. If you look at the activity at the level of body, it is the same, right? As animal, which is the same as the pranic order. Now if you look at the basic characteristics, <coughs> at the level of body it is same, <coughs> existence and growth. But at the level of self, there is a will to live with continuous happiness. That is the difference between the animal and the human being, right? The animals have the will to live. <coughs> the human being also has will to live, but live with continuous happiness. And if you try to... <coughs> what you have to do to ensure this continuity of happiness? 
What we need to do is the right understanding and right feeling. Which requires right understanding. Gyan, it, in Hindi it is called Gyan. So Gyan is required, knowledge is required, right understanding is required. <coughs> this right understanding will lead to right understanding and right feeling, which will lead to continuous happiness in us. <coughs> this is the basic characteristic of human being. Okay. Now you can see, <coughs> okay. all that you see around in nature, will fall in this category, or this category, or this category, or this category. <coughs> that is all that you see around in the nature. Right? Things like soil, water, metal, and so on. Then things like trees and plants. Then things like animals and birds. And finally things like human beings. And we can understand all these four orders. Okay? On the basis of their units, on the basis of their activity, on the basis of their basic characteristics. <coughs> and why we need to understand them? Because we have to live with them. <coughs> so if we want to live with happiness, we have to live in harmony in nature. Right? In order to live in harmony in nature, I must understand this nature and the different orders in nature, different units in nature. Right. <coughs> Only when I understand them properly, I can decide what to do with whom. So if I understand human being, I can decide what to do with human being, with myself and with other human being. If I understand what is animals and birds, then I can decide how to live with these animals and birds in a harmonious manner. Similarly, the plants and trees and the soil and water and metals, right? So it is essential for me to understand them. What do you think? Is it essential to understand? Because if you don't understand, right, one problem is that we will always feel insecure, right? We will have a feeling of fear. The other is we are not able to live with them in a mutually fulfilling manner, which will create problems later on. So I need to understand all of them, right? Every unit I have to understand, every order I have to understand. So I have given this description of these four orders on the basis of the units, on the basis of their activity, on the basis of their characteristics. Now you can observe this and see whether this is true, not true. <coughs> I guess the only difference that I understand between animal and human is the right understanding and feelings and knowledge. It seems like the other things are common for both. Yeah. That's what we have been saying right from the first day. <coughs> but here we say that the animals don't imagine or analyze or have a continuous happiness. Yeah. So the <coughs> major concern of the animal in terms of activity, if you see, has to do with selecting and testing. Okay. And which has to do with their will to live. So this is the major concern. When you come to human being, right, this is a concern, okay, that will to live is a concern, but that's not only concern. Right. This will to live with continuous happiness, okay, has what has become very prominent 
And this has become prominent because of this activity of imaging. Eh? Activity of thinking. This issue of fearlessness, for example, we are talking in the last session. Eh? 